Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you all the basics you need to know to create your first quiz using Google Forms, how to distribute that quiz to your students via Google Classroom, how your students will see the quiz, answer the quiz, and you'll see how you can view their responses and scores. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to know is how to access Google Forms. There are three ways that you can do it. You can do it from your Google Drive and select New, Forms, and then Blank Form, Blank Quiz, or from a template. You can also type in your browser, forms.google.com, and you'll see the Google Forms that way, and you can create a new one from here, or look at the template gallery. You can also simply type forms.new, and that will launch you directly into a blank Google form. All three methods work equally well. Let's go ahead and make our first Google form quiz. Now you can use one of the templates if you like, and if you scroll down, you'll see there's an education section with an exit ticket, an assessment, a worksheet, and course evaluation. But I've always found it's easier to learn and master Google Forms if you start with a blank one. So that's what we're going to do. And let's give this a title, sample quiz number 998. Now you'll see here that this form is automatically collecting email addresses. And we can change that if we like. In the upper right hand corner, click on that gear icon. You can turn off the restricting to users within your domain. Now, some domains will have that set as a default and you may not be able to turn that off. You can turn off collecting email addresses, but we also, while we're here, need to make sure we click on quizzes and select make this a quiz. Now we have some quiz options. We can release the grades immediately to students after they submit, or we can manually review all of the responses before they get to see their answers and their scores. We'll see here, we also have the option to not let students see the missed questions, correct answers, and point values until we allow that. I'm gonna turn those back on. And let's now save those settings. Now, before we make our first quiz question, I wanna point out that you don't have to use this purple and white color scheme all the time. You can customize the theme by going to the upper right corner selecting customize, and you can change the color, make it blue or green or brown, any of the colors you like, you can use right there. I'm gonna go back to that kind of bluish color. Change your background color if you like, and you can change your font style if you want to as well. I'm going back to the basic one. Now let's add our first question to our quiz. And we're gonna make a multiple choice quiz question here. So let's just say, what is the tallest mountain in the world? And for some questions, Google is going to try to suggest correct answers for you, like, this one here, it's going to say Mount Everest, but let's add some others. And let's add one more here, and we'll say Mount right Rainier. Yep. Now, I can move these answer choices by clicking and dragging on them so that the order changes. Now we have our answer key. We want to make sure that we have 
the correct answer selected. And we can change our point value. We can make it worth 10 points or 25 points or zero points if you wanted to as well. I'm going to put it back to five points. Now, we can also add some answer feedback for our students. And let's put in some feedback on the incorrect answers. Let me say, that's not quite right. Here's some information about the tallest mountains in the world. And I'm going to include a link to some information about the tallest mountains in the world. So let's click on that link button. And now let's put in an article about the tallest mountains in the world. So I'll just head here and grab this little article here. And I'll put that link as part of the answer feedback. Now, correct answers, I'll say something like, great job. And we'll save that. Now, I'm done with that question. So let's add another question. And this time, I'm going to use multiple choice with pictures as part of the answer options. Let's say, which of these things is not like the other? And in option one, I'm going to add an image on the right-hand side here. Now, if you don't see that, just hover over your option one and then you'll see the add image button and you can upload an image. You can even take a picture. You can use your Google photos or your Google drive, or we can do Google image search. And I'm going to look for a picture of an orange. And so let's use this one here and now insert that as my answer choice. Let's do that again. Do my image search, insert one more time, and for option three, I'm going to add an image, and I'm going to look for an apple. Now, I need to select a correct answer, so let's go into the answer key. And we'll select that one. And I'm going to leave my point value as five points. Again, I could an add answer feedback, but for the sake of keeping this demo short, I'm going to not do that this time. Click done. And we now have our question. Now, let's add another question. And this time, we're going to use an image as part of the question prompt. So to do that, Let's click on the image icon here. And this time I'm going to upload a picture that I have stored on my computer. So let's hit browse. And I have a picture that I want to use. We'll upload that. I'm going to write my question. Where in the world is this building. And now let's put in some answer choices. And again, select our answer key and save that question. Now, so far we've done all multiple choice questions, 
but you don't have to restrict yourself to just multiple choice questions. Let's go and add an additional question here and not do multiple choice. Instead, let's do a short answer question. And this time I'm gonna ask the question, what is the tallest mountain in the world? And again, when I ask that question, Google is trying to suggest some answers for me. And we can select Mount Everest, but in my answer key, I also want to add an alternate answer. So if my student just writes Everest instead of Mount Everest, I still want to give them full credit for that. Likewise, if a student writes something like MT Everest, I want to give them credit for that. So I'm going to put in all those possible variations of the answer and I'll mark all other answers incorrect. Now let's click done and save that. And now let's add one more question. And this question I'm going to use a paragraph response. So instead of being just a one word or two word answer, in this case, I'm gonna have my students write just a little bit more information. And let's say, please explain why the United States hasn't adopted the metric system. Now, for my answer key, we'll see there that all I have is answer feedback because this is an open-ended question that I'm going to have to manually review. So let's click done on that one. Now let's take a look at how to give this quiz to our students. Let's hit send and let's grab the link for this. And I'll click copy. And in my Google Classroom, let's go ahead and hit classwork and create a little assignment. And let's say, please take sample quiz number 998. And I'm going to click add. And I can include the link, hit add link, and they'll see the Google form there. Now, alternatively, I could have clicked add and Google Drive, and then in my Google Drive, selected sample quiz number 998 and inserted that one. Either way will work. And when I do this, we'll see I have grade importing turned on. So that will import the scores from my students' responses into my Google Classroom gradebook. Now, of course, I can set a due date for this. Let's set it as Friday. And let's go ahead and assign that to our students. So I'm going to assign that to my students, and now let's take a look at how the student will view this. So here's my student who has signed in to his Google Classroom account, and he'll see in the stream that he now has this new assignment. Please take sample quiz number 998. And I'll click on it. And my student you can see here is automatically signed into his Google account and he's going to answer these questions. So let's go through here and just for fun, I'm gonna show you what happens if he answers incorrectly. So let's say Mount Washington there and I'll answer this one and this one 
He's going to write Everest. And he might write, your guess is as good as mine. Seriously though, I think it's just Americans being stubborn. Anybody watching this, please don't take offense to that answer. So let's hit submit. Now, student can view the score and he'll see his score right there, but he's got 15 out of 25 points. Trouble is, this one hasn't been scored yet. Okay, so it automatically gave him zero points for this one. So this is not an accurate reflection of his score. He can also go back here and hit the open assignment button. And he'll see that it's already been submitted. Already submitted. And he can even send a private comment to me and say, why didn't I get any points for the last question? So my student has now submitted it. Now let's take a look at how the teacher will view these submitted responses. So back here in the teacher panel, in my teacher account, there's my sample quiz assignment. I click on it and I can see that it's been turned in. So let's click on that. And we'll, we can see here, here's Mason's score and it's turned in. And we'll see that comment, why didn't I get any points for the last question? So let's go back and take a look at the quiz itself. So there it is. And it's like, oh yeah, I forgot that I had to grade this one. So as the teacher, let's go back to my original form. Let's look at responses. And I can scroll down to see what was written in that response. But that process is going to take a while if I have 25 students I'm going to tab through each response and go down and read each one of those responses. That could take a while. So what I do is I go and click create spreadsheet, create a new spreadsheet for it, And I can see, here it is, there's Mason's response. Now, I'm gonna change that score. Instead of giving him 15 points, I'm gonna give him 20 points out of 25. Alternatively, I could have done that here in the individuals and written in five points that way. However, I find that again, if I have 25 kids or 30 kids taking the quiz, doing it that way is not as efficient for me as doing it in a spreadsheet of responses. But either way will work. Now I can release that score to the student. And my student will get the message that his score has been released with the updated score. Now back in Google Classroom, let's refresh this and we'll give Mason his score. Now he got 20 out of 25 points, so I'm going to do the math. That's 80 out of 100 on my 100 point scale. And I'll return that to Mason as well. So that's a short overview of everything you need to know to create a quiz in Google Forms, give it to your students in Google Classroom, how your students answer it, and how you can view and score their responses. For more information about neat things you can do in Google Forms, take a look at the links listed down below in the description. And for more tutorials like this, 
please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit freetechforteachers.com.